Good morning. Saturday morning coffee and a little bit of a tech talk. So um, I am continuing along with Tom Meyer Infanson's uh, collection of exercises for PLC programming. And today I was in chapter nine for development of function functions and function blocks. So if you are interested in function blocks, um, I can get my little whiteboard to work here. I mean, the idea is pretty simple, right? The, um, you have your main program that's running. And then you call the function I so this is like cyclic. So this is your PLC program running in the background, and you get to your function call, and so then the PLC says, "Oh, wait a second. Um, I'm going to go over here," and then he goes over here and he runs this bit of code, um, and that's all. That's all a function block does. And then after it's in, after it's completed, what's in here? And then it comes back over here and starts starts running the program again for the rest of the rest of what's in the PLC program. So the uh, chapter nine just talks about you know, manipulating numbers, and there's already um, if we look in the program here, and what I've got going on is code sys, and I created an application. Um, created a main task or my POUP PLC application and then I just I just made up my own multiplication block. Um, so to give you an idea, I mean it's running right now. And I made I made this a, a function block multiplication. So if we go to properties Yeah, so default function block diagram. So that's why it automatically went to here. Um, I made my function block structured text because I feel like it's easier to build math problems in structured text. Um, and that's what you got right there as far as structured text for the type of object background. And then let's just go offline for a second so you can see. Yeah, and essentially we're doing, um, it's just two numbers, right? So two numbers going into your block and then an output. So number one, number two, and then your output result. Um, part of his exercise he wanted us to be able to uh, to do this just using um, the function call and doing a result that kept getting a, an error within code sys, so I'd have to come back and um, revisit that one. So I just went ahead and explicitly defined an output variable and defined my input variables, and that's. That's something that's a little bit different with the code system environment compared to some other environments. But I mean, the structured text works all the works the same. You know, like if I wanted to add variables in between, you would just do you would declare them here, and then put you know whatever variable, and then and then make it. I don't know, whatever you want it to be. And then if you did that, you'd have to rebuild, generate the code, make sure you don't get any errors, you know, et cetera. Um, and then this would be all local within the, within the function. So the PLC application is over here, and I think a lot of people get hung up on, or at least I did when I initially started programming these, um, 
you declare this in here, and this is for the purpose of being able to reuse, so they can be very generic names. And then over here, you gotta redeclare the variables that are going into your function block, and then grab the result. And of course, they all have to match, so if you notice, I've got all integers, and they're all integers here, except for the string we just made up, but the result is an integer, and the two inputs are integers. And so in this case, this multiplier block is only doing um, integers, so really, I ought to call it integers or integer multiplication block, you know, something. Um, and if you name it properly, if you put FB up front, then you can see that it's a function block when it's in your code. And then multiplication integer, and for me, people might confuse that, so you could just go ahead and spell it out. And then you gotta refactor it all. Refactoring just means it's going to update automatically everywhere that it's called. And what's really cool with CodeSys is it updates here as well. Um, some applications would make you re bring in the function block again when you made a change. Um, anyway, that's a little bit about the function block. If we want to test it, now granted, I am in simulation, so simulation is da, da, da. I had to tell it that I wanted to simulate before it went into simulation. Otherwise, yeah, so you gotta check this off on the online simulation. Otherwise it will try to scan for a PLC. And if you're just playing on your computer, you're you're never gonna find a PLC unless you have purchased one and have one sitting on your desk. And I, I don't have one sitting on my desk. Um, and you can see that you're in simulation because it says simulation down here. And I got pre-compile, okay, zero errors. I got 27 messages, so it's probably, yeah, these are all system messages. And so it's just information on the build. Um, so there's nothing I have to worry about. These are not warnings from the runtime code. The runtime code is zero warnings and zero errors. So I feel happy about going online. And since I'm already kind of online, I can do log on with online change or log in with, log in with download. Um, and you notice that it wants to update the boot application, so that's important when you're not simulating. <laughs> All right, so we go online here, we got zero, 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 zero. And if I wanna change these values, go to prepared, we put 25 and two. Um, and now I gotta write these values in, and that's just the way that the code system environment works. Um, and not any different than if you were in Mitsubishi or somewhere else. Um, you gotta write them in for your simulated values. So if you come over here to debug, you can click on here, or if you're one of those folks that likes to use the keyboard, control F7. So you notice that it wrote those variables or those values into my registers, which is the input variable one and two. Um, but it hasn't done anything yet, right? I've got zero as an output, so it hasn't gone to the function block yet because we're not running. So if I hit the start button, then we get we get 50, which we all know, 25. Or if you're in America, um, two quarters is half pence, so 50 cents. Um, so let's say I want to do it again. So I can go, let's make a dollar. So you just change that. You don't have to change this one, even though I already had it in there, I guess. I don't have to change that one. 
And you see how it's pending? Yeah, it's pending a change there. So as soon as I go Control F7, we go to 100. And yeah, that's the way it works. Um, so what if I had $400 bills? I go control F7. Uh, so it still thinks I'm inputting, so I gotta click off of it. Now, if I wanna send it, control F7, and I get 400. Um, and the whole idea of this exercise is so that you can practice creating a simple mathematic function block, but if you if you expand on this, then you can understand that you can make more complicated math and you could do it off to the side and not in your in your PLC application. And you know, it would just be represented by this block and then it makes your PLC code look a lot cleaner. Um, and then also I can reuse this as many times as I want, essentially. So if I copy this case and see it automatically renumbered it which I don't even have to do that <laughs> so we're gonna cut that because like if I go let me see if it'll give me another branch eh, insert network all right well you guys are seeing that I all right, so we flipped it there, right? So if I'm gonna call it again, just go like that, and then go over here to the application, and I can pull it there. So I've got it again, right? And so if I wanted to do a different group of numbers, then I could just say, And then the beauty of the Kertzis environment is it'll pop it up for you like that. So it automatically follows suit with what you had before. Um, and we're going to put it in our Skype here for a variable for the program. But if you look here, you've got, um, you know, you, you've got all these choices if you want to make it an input, you know, whatever, temporary, global, status, instruction, yeah, etc. Um, so we're just going to keep, keep it a variable, and then same thing if I do input variable 4, um, integer, except it doesn't like, it, it kept all my question marks that it automatically had, and then so in this case, I have to associate a variable assignment. So just drag it from the toolbox. Can you see how the diamond goes green? And then it's asking me there, right? So if I go and we will call it result two multiplier or result multiplier two. But you gotta discern some some type of difference, right? Because you've got this is your second call. And brings it up again, we're going to default to an integer type. So in that case, we can go ahead and rebuild it. And then if I go online, you know, and it brings it back. So then we're back at the same place. Um, And then control F7. Ta -da! And we're already running. And that's why it's asking me if I want to do an online change because we're still in a run, a run mode. Um, but this is how you would create a function block that you could reuse um, as many times as you want. And that's the beauty of function blocks. Um, and it, it just looks a lot 
in this case, it, it doesn't make too much of a difference because your function block is only like one line. However, um, yeah, this is just an example. So you can picture that you can have a whole lot of code in here, um, which would make your PLC application a lot cleaner. So anyway, um, download CodeSys. It's free. You can play with it all day. You can run it on your computer. Um, and you can simulate. And that makes it really good for practicing code. Um, and then it also allows you to build function blocks, ladder logic, structured text, you know, wh whatever of the PLC program languages that you want to learn, you have the capacity to do so.